At flipsidegaming.com you can use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10, and now you also get automatically entered into the Richard Kane Ferguson Playmat giveaway. Hello and welcome to another modern gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Monorant prison deck featuring four copies of Karn, the great creator from War of the Spark, a four mana planeswalker that starts out at five loyalty and has a static ability saying activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control cannot be activated, so kind of like having a stony silence. Then the plus one ability turns a non-creature artifact into an artifact creature with power and toughness equal to the converted mana cost of that artifact until our next turn, so we can get in some damage. But what's really exciting about Karn is the minus two ability Ability that lets us search our sideboard for an artifact card and put it into our hand and that gives us access to an entire toolbox of different artifacts we can search up depending on the situation and one of the more exciting cards we can search up out of the sideboard is Mycosynth Lattice six mana artifact that says all permanents are artifacts in addition to their other types now if we combine that line of text with Karn's static ability saying activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control cannot be activated essentially means the opponent can no longer tap their lands for mana because much like a dark steel citadel can no longer tap for mana when there's a stony silence out if the opponent's lands all turn into artifacts they can no longer tap for mana either so that's a very powerful combo. Of course, it is pretty expensive to pull off since we need to play 4 mana Karn and search up a 6 mana Lattice and be able to play it. But if we can assemble it, it's usually game over. So this is just one of the new cards from War of the Spark. Otherwise, we've got a pretty traditional mono red prison deck since we've got 4 copies of Simi Spirit Guide that we can exile from our hand to add 1 red mana to our mana pool. 2 copies of Paradic Ritual, costing us 2 mana, generating 3 mana, and 4 copies of Desperate Ritual, which does the same, but also has Splice onto Arcane, which every now and then can generate a little bit of extra mana as well. So we can use all these Ritual effects to put powerful lock pieces into play ahead of schedule, like Chalice of the Void, which we want to play for X equals 1 most of the time, so we can counter any spell with Convert Mana cost 1. And then we've got three copies of Ensnaring Bridge, which is great against any creature decks, since creatures with power greater than the number of cards in our hand cannot attack, and we can often empty our hand pretty quickly, since we've got all these ritual effects emptying our hand quickly, and then creatures will be unable to attack, and we can win the game using our Planeswalkers. We also have the full four copies of Blood Moon, which punishes non-basic lands from the opponent, turning them all into mountains, so if we can put a Blood Moon in play on turn two, that can be a pretty effective way to win a game as well. So that's kind of the idea behind the deck, so let's take a look at our entire list here. At two mana, besides all the ritual effects, we've got four copies of a Braid, which is our cheap removal spell of choice, can deal three damage to a creature, and can also destroy an artifact. The reason why we're not playing Lightning Bolt is of course because we're playing three copies of Chalice of the Void, as well as one copy in the sideboard that we can search up with Karn the Great Creator. Then another neat synergy with a Braid in this deck is that if we do manage to search up the Lattice in the sideboard, or the cheaper version, which is a liquid metal coating, which we can tap to turn target permanent into an artifact in addition to its other types until end of turn. Then a braid can essentially destroy that artifact. So if the opponent has a powerful planeswalker out, we can search up a coating, turn that planeswalker into an artifact in addition to its other types, and then use a braid to destroy it. So that's a pretty nifty combo in the deck as well. Then at three mana, we've got our four copies of Blood Moon alongside four copies of Goblin Rebel Master, which can also close out games very quickly, especially when the opponent is locked out by a Blood Moon, or if we can put the Goblin Rebel Master in play on turn one or turn two, thanks to our ritual effects, since the Rebel Master starts out as a 2-2, saying other Goblin creatures we control attack each combat if able, and at the beginning of combat on our turn, we get to make a 1-1 red Goblin creature token with haste, that's of course going to be forced to attack, and when the Rebel Master attacks, it gets plus one plus so until end of turn for each other attacking Goblin, so that can get out of hand very quickly, especially once we get multiple copies of Goblin Rabble Master in play. And another interaction to point out between the Rabble Master and a card like Ensnaring Bridge is that if we're empty handed, we draw a card for a turn. Now we've got one card in hand. Before playing out that card, we can simply move to combat, attack with all the 1 1 goblins we've generated from the Rabble Master, and then in our second main phase, we can play out our hand so our opponent is unable to attack us on the way back. And then we also have two copies of Legion Warboss that's very similar to the Goblin Rabble Master, making a hasty 1 1 red goblin creature token that's forced to attack the turn it comes into play. And the Legion Warboss itself also has mentors so can distribute some plus one plus one counters on smaller creatures when the war boss is attacking and then we have two copies of anger of the gods as our sweeper effect of choice dealing three damage to each creature and also exiling those creatures and that's a very powerful card against any creature deck alongside our three copies of ensnaring bridge 
Then at 4 mana we've got 3 copies of Chandra, Torch of Defiance, as a powerful planeswalker with a lot of different abilities. The plus 1 can generate a bit of card advantage and can deal damage to the opponent, so it can also act as a win condition. Then the second plus 1 ability can add double red to our mana pool, so it makes it a lot easier to maybe play that 6 mana lattice out of the sideboard after searching it up with Karn. Then the minus 3 ability deals 4 damage to a creature, and the minus 7 ability is also game winning giving us an emblem that deals 5 damage to any target whenever we cast a spell. And then we also have one copy of Pia and Kiran Alar as a nice mid-range threat as a 2-2 creature that is joined by two flying Thopter tokens that we can sacrifice for 3 mana, dealing 2 damage to any target, and we can sacrifice any artifact to that ability, so also plays well with any artifacts we search up with Karn. And then we've got the full 4 copies of Karn, which is the build around card in our deck. We will take a look at the sideboard in just a second. First, taking a look at our mana base, 3 copies of Gemstone Caverns, which if we have it in our opening hand while on the draw, we can exile a card from our hand and put the Gemstone Caverns in play with a luck counter on it, and then the Caverns taps for 1 mana of any color, so that's a way to steal the play from our opponent. We've got one copy of Blast Zone, which is kind of like an engineered explosive built into our land, and then four copies of Ramana Pruins, which can tap for one Colos or one red mana if we pay one life, and we can also sacrifice it to deal two damage to an opponent, and then the rest of our mana base is all basic mountains. Then moving on to the sideboard, it's mostly artifacts we can search up with Karn, as well as one copy of Sweltering Suns as an additional sweeper effect against creature decks. The reason we're not playing the third copy of Anger of the Gods is a humans matchup and meddling mage, so if they name Anger of the Gods, we can still wipe the board with Sweltering Suns instead, and we can also cycle it for 3 mana. Then looking at our artifacts, we've got a Tormod Script as Graveyard Hate, Welding Jar that can protect our artifacts that we search up with Karn, a Gravedigger's Cage has more Graveyard Hate that also has some applications against Collected Company decks, Dragon's Claw against the Burn decks, we've got the Liquid Metal Coating to turn stuff into artifacts to synergize with our Karn and our Braids, then we have two copies of Sorcerer's Spyglass as kind of a two mana pithing needle to play around our own Chalice of the Void, that can also take a look at the opponent's hand and maybe shut down Planeswalkers or other annoying activated abilities, we've got a Spell Sky to redirect Burn spells or removal spells, Got a Torpor Orb that can shut down enter battlefield abilities, so great against a deck like humans, even though it's a bit of a nombo with our Pia and Kirin. We've got an Ensnaring Bridge that we can search up with Karn alongside our three copies in the main deck. We've got a Trini Sphere, which is great against decks that rely on cheap cantrips, since now they all cost three mana. We've got the Lattice for the Wombo Combo, another Chalice of the Void to search up, and a Walking Ballista that can also act as a win condition through our own Ensnaring Bridge, since it doesn't need to attack in order to kill an opponent. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got a Gemstone Caverns in our opening hand. So I think uh, we can keep. And what do we exile? I think the Abrade. So next turn we can play a Chalice on 1, and a turn after Chandra. And use that as our win condition. Opponent is on turn 1 Stomping Ground into Faithless Looting, so it could be Dredge, in which case this hand's not particularly amazing, although they don't have any Dredge creature in the graveyard yet. Could also go for the War Boss to apply some pressure, don't know if that's gonna get the job done. I think I'm gonna run out Chalice on one, shut down more copies of Faithless Looting, and then next turn we can see if we wanna go for a War Boss or a Chandra. Opponent gets back Bloodgast, of course Cathartic Reunion here would be a problem. And yep, although still no dredger, so Putin doesn't get to fill the graveyard quite yet. And we can run out a Chandra here if we want to, which sounds pretty decent. Or we could run out a Pia and Kirin, but Chandra helps us generate more mana on the following turn. So I think I'm into playing Chandra. And just plus for now. Opponent also discarded two Shriek Horns, which they couldn't resolve in the face of a Chalice of the Void. So it did accomplish something, and our opponent's just gonna scoop it up. So yeah, the Chalice on one was pretty effective, opponent unable to find any dredgers to put in their graveyard. And now the interesting question is, do we bring in these graveyard hate cards, or do we keep them in the sideboard so we can surge them up with Karn? Um, anything else that stands out? Not really, maybe another Ensnaring Bridge we could bring in the main. Doesn't help against the Conflagrate kill, but it helps against the creature part of their deck. This is where we wish the Sweltering Suns was another copy of Anger of the Gods. So I think I will bring in these Graveyard Hate cards. Maybe we should split the difference and have like one in the sideboard and one in the main deck. So we can still search one up with Karn if we don't draw it naturally. But I think we want them in the main since Dredge can be pretty explosive and we want these cards as soon as possible. A Braid is pretty bad. 
So I can see taking that out. Maybe Sweltering Suns is still better than a Braid. And yeah, I think we'll try this. Could have also considered bringing in the Welding Jar. Since their opponent uh, is going to have some copies of Ancient Grudge, presumably. What about this one? We're on the draw yet again. And we have Gemstone Caverns and Spirit Guide. So we can make 2 mana on turn 1. If we draw a Mountain, we can make 3 mana. I mean, Anger of the Gods can help quite a bit. So I'm kind of tempted to keep this. Yeah, we'll try it. And if we can put a Chandra in play, she can also generate more mana to deploy the rest of her hand. Put Caverns in play. Now what do we exile? Probably just a Rabble Master. Since we've got a backup copy. Although Rabble Master in multiples can be effective at closing out the game. Alright, turn on Treecorn. Mills over a Creeping Chill and a Life from the Loam. Alright, there's a Desperate Ritual. So we could cast... A Rebel Master on turn 1. Is that something we're interested in? I think we're better off saving the Ritual until we draw land so we can deploy a Chandra or maybe an Anger of the Gods if we are too far behind. Another Creeping Chill, milled over with a Dredge from Life from the Loam. Stinkweed Imp, another Dredger in the Graveyard. If you haven't seen the Dredge deck in action and are confused, I recommend checking out the video we did a while back on the Dredge deck. Blood Geist comes back into play, mills over a Conflagrate that they can flash back. So no need to Anger of the Gods quite yet. And there's a Mountain, so I think it's time to deploy Chandra. Now that the board is still manageable. Could have also got on a Karn, but since we boarded in the Tormod script, we couldn't search it up. Alright, so hopefully Chandra survives here, and then we get to Anger of the Gods to clean up the board. Take it from there. Opponent could of course flash back the Conflagrate to kill Chandra here. They're just gonna play another Bloodcast. Well, now the Anger of the Gods is looking good. Bloodcast goes for our face. Alright, let's make some mana. And cast Anger. Don't think we want to do anything else here. But we are down to 12. Conflagrate and Creeping Chills are going to add up. Prize Amalgam milled over. So this would be a good time for a Tormod script. But uh, we can no longer search it up with Karn. So yeah, the downsides of boarding in cards and no longer being able to search them up with Karn is real. Opponent goes for Life from the Loam, gets back some lands. Triple Prize Amalgam in the Graveyard, as well as a Blood Gas that they can use to trigger the Amalgams. So it's not looking good here. We also boarded in the 4th Ensnaring Bridge, would be a good draw. But means we can't search it up with Karn. 6 mana total, anything we can search up with Karn that could save us. Didn't think minusing and killing a creature with Chandra is gonna help us. So I guess we need to Ritual first here. Play Karn. Minus. And what do we have? I guess we can get a spell Skite as a blocker. Don't know if that's gonna really help us much. I guess we'll get a spell Skite. Second Conflagrate in the graveyard. We could have redirected the Conflagrate to our Spell Skite, but I assumed my opponent dealt 1 damage to Spell Skite with everything else going at her face, and if that's the case, we can no longer successfully redirect with Spell Skite, since it is already one of the targets. Just double checking that they're all going face. They are. Alright. So let's move on to a game 3 here. Also interesting to note that Karn was shutting down the Shriek Horns, so it has a bit of extra upside there as well. Yeah, we just had to pull the trigger a bit early on the Anger of the Gods to protect our Chandra, and then our opponent milled over triple Prize Amalgam. If we were able to line that up a little bit better, we might have been able to survive and pull off a Chandra ultimate or search up the Lattice with Karn and shut our opponent out of the game. I think I'm still okay with our sideboard plan. Could maybe keep one and Snaring Bridge in the sideboard, but it is pretty good to just draw it, and it's not like a Braid is helping us much. Did not see any ancient grudges from our opponent, so I think we'll try again. Would like to be on the play. 
All right, we've got a turn one Blood Moon, followed by an Ensnaring Bridge. Blood Moon's not amazing against their decks, as they can still cast Faithful Sluting and Reunion through it. Shriekhorn doesn't care about it, Conflagrate. So it only really stops a handful of cards. Could just go for a turn one Rebel Master instead. Maybe that's the way to go. Keep up the pressure. Yeah, I guess we'll keep. And then we'll go with turn one Rebel Master. If we had a four mana Planeswalker in hand, I think I would wait. But hopefully this Rebel Master catches our opponent off guard. And we are able to outrace them. Turn on looting. It's not like Blood Moon would have stopped that. Let's see what they discard. Creeping Chill and Blood Gas, so no Dredger. Important to note. Let's get in there. Rebel Master swings for four. Total of six damage on turn two. Not bad. All right, opponent returns Bloodcast. And it's going to be a Cathartic Reunion, discarding another Creeping Chill and a second Reunion, so still no Dredger. So your opponent's deck is not really functioning according to plan, and there's a Graph Digger's Cage. Not bad, so this game's looking good. Let's get in there. Opponent down to five. Let's play our Cage. And say go. And yeah, if they don't answer the Rebel Master, they're dead. No conflagrates in sight, and our opponent scoops it up. Definitely possible that we should have just gone for turn one Rebel Master in game two, instead of trying to set up Chandra. But because we had Anger of the Gods in hand, we were kind of well set up to play a longer game where we can wipe the board and leverage our four mana Planeswalkers. Alright, we're on the play. I don't think I like this hand. On the draw it would be keepable thanks to the Gemstone Caverns. On the play, we're just way too slow. Let's go to six. Alright, turn one Chalice. Hope that's good enough. I guess we'll try it. And I don't think I want to keep a Spirit Guide on top. Since we were going to need to draw some lands. Alright, let's hope the Chalice on one can buy us some time. Turn on Forests. There's a Ramana Ruins, so we're just one land away from Rabble Master. Got a braid to kind of clear a path. And it's going to be a Fertile Grounds. Alright, so this is one of those Utopia Sprawl ramp decks. Spirit Guide lets us play Rebel Master. Well, Chalsa 1 is pretty effective against them since it shuts down Utopia Sprawl. The different Mana Elves. So it probably did slow them down quite a bit. But they still have access to... Quite a bit of mana here. Nykthos now as well. So this is four mana total. And it's going to be an overgrowth. Right, so it's another way to add more mana. Let's keep on attacking. Six damage, opponent down to 13. Need two more turns here to try and close out the game. Hopefully a braid is good enough to remove a creature. So the rabble master can keep attacking. Mono green's not going to have a ton of removal for our creatures. But they might be able to play some bigger creatures that block the Rabble Master. Alright, it's gonna be Plow Under. Bouncing two of our lands. Fair enough. Floats of mana. Does not answer the Rabble Master, however. Alright. Put on down to five. And we might be at a point where the Goblin Tokens can kind of close out the game by themselves. Utopia Sprawl gets countered by Chalice. And an Eternal Witness, which we can abraid. Getting back Plow Under. Primal Command gaining 7 and searching for a creature. So our opponent's up to 12. Let's see if we can get across the finish line. Our opponent searched up another Eternal Witness with that Primal Command, so they can kind of keep looping those. Opponent falls to two. So they can play Eternal Witness. Getting back Primal Command. I think in response to the trigger, I'm just gonna kill the Witness here, so they can't play more stuff out and have more Devotion. 
So your opponent floats a bunch of mana in response with Nykthos. Gets back the Primal Command. So we've got 6 mana total here. Is that enough to stay alive? Searches for a creature, Arbor Elf, but the Chalice on 1 is going to counter it. And the Rebel Master is going to get across the finish line. Alright, so Chalice on 1 did a lot of work that game, even if we didn't necessarily notice it right away. So against a green ramp deck, how do we want to sideboard? The Abrades are good. Anger of the Gods is probably okay. Could consider bringing in the extra Chalice out of the sideboard to put it on one. Uh, Potent might bring in some Artifact Hate, so Welding Jar could be serviceable. And Snaring Bridge is okay, but doesn't necessarily win us the game since their opponent gets a lot of selection with uh, cards like Primal Command, even though ultimately they're probably going to have to attack us to win the game. Blood Moon's not amazing uh, when they have all forests, so that's also not a card I'm too excited about. So maybe we shave some copies of Blood Moon, bring in Sweltering Suns. I guess Walking Ballista in the main deck is probably better than a Blood Moon and a Welding Char as well. Yeah, let's try this. Blood Moon, of course, still shuts down Nykthos, so does have some applications. But now that we're also on the draw, I don't expect Blood Moon to be a very useful card. All right, so what do we have here? Turn one Chalice again, but of course we're on the draw now. I think it's still good enough. And if they have a Mana Elf, we can kill it with an Abrade. It's a Birds of Paradise. It's Snaring Bridge. Yeah, I think I'm still going for the Chalice instead of Abrading the Bird. Prevent them from casting... Utopia Sprawls. It's gonna be a Nykthos. Three mana for a Kitchen Finks, fair enough. Good against a Rebel Master plan. I think we're just abrading the bird here. Try and slow them down on their mana development. And then eventually try and get to our Chandra. Alright, opponent does nothing. We're stuck with a bunch of three drops in hand. So I'm guessing our Chalice is being pretty useful. Alright, more expensive cards. Just waiting on those Rituals and those lands. In the meantime, Kitchen Things got us all the way down to 11. Third land. And a Hornet Nest from our opponent. Pretty nice card against our Rebel Master since we're forced to attack into it so they get those tokens. But now we can just uh, decline to run it out there. I guess we'll play an Ensnaring Bridge. Hornet Nest also good against burn base removal, since they'll still end up with a bunch of flying insect tokens. Alright, opponents floating a bunch of mana with Nykthos for Garrick Wildspeaker, which can make some beast tokens. The problem here is that even though we have an ensnaring bridge, our hand is just all expensive cards, so we will struggle to empty our hand in time. So now what? We can play Ritual into a Chandra. Chandra can minus, but then they can still finish off our Chandra. Could play a second main phase, a Rebel Master or War Boss, just to chum block. And try and empty your hand that way without playing it main phase 1, as to not give her opponent a token with a Hornet Nest. Anything we can get with Karn that saves us? Not really. Alright, so I think I'm down with the second main chum blocker here. Harmonize, put on draws, three cards. And as soon as they cast a plow under here, it's pretty much game over. Eternal Witness, get back, Harmonize. Yeah, the Hornet Nest is a pretty effective card against us. Kitchen Finks also good against the Rebel Masters. So I think here we're blocking the Finks. Ramen up ruins the draw. So we can play Chandra, plus for mana, play a Ritual. And then play out a 3-drop. Let's do that second main. And now the 3 part creatures can no longer attack us, but they still have a Witness and a Finks that can. But our opponent's probably going to draw into an answer for the bridge at some point here with all the card draw they've been getting. There's another Harmonize. And yeah, there's Acidic Slime for Ensnaring Bridge. And that's probably going to be game over. Eternal Witness, get back Harmonize. So I guess we can still survive this turn if we chum block the Beast. And fall to one. 
And then we need to find a way to get another bridge in play. So I guess that works. Play a bridge, plus Chandra for mana, play War Boss, down to one card in hand. And we're technically still alive. So again, we'll go to second main here, since if the Hornet Nest makes a token, we're just dead. Opponent plays a third Harmonize. I think we brought in the Welding Jar, so we can't search it up with Karn to protect our bridge. Opponent's got basically infinite mana here. Hornet Queen making a bunch of 1-1 flyers. So if our hand's not empty, we're dead. Pia and Kieran, yeah, that might be game over now. Only have access to a total of 6 mana, and we have 8 mana worth of cards in hand. We can play Pia and Kieran, have 2 flying blockers, minus on another flyer, but then we're still dead. I guess we'll have a look with Karn here to see what we can find in the sideboard. But I doubt there's an answer. So anything that saves us from a bunch of angry hornets doesn't look like it. Well, we were pretty close to assembling the Lattice combo. I guess we can take the Spyglass and have a look at their hands. Which might inform our decisions in the next game. Alright, more Garrick Wild Speakers, Utopia Sprawls, a lot of one drops that were stopped by the Chance of the Void. Let's move on to the next one. So, any changes for Chalice is definitely good, all the sweeper effects are good, all the removal, walking ballista is fine, welding jar to protect against artifact removal, blood moon is still pretty bad, even though it does stop Nykthos, maybe we want a welding jar on the sideboard instead of on the main deck so we can search it up with Karn, stops eternal witness, hornet queen, acidic slime, maybe some other creatures too, kitchen things, so yeah the tropper orb seems good enough to bring in the main deck, alright we'll try this. Would like to be on the play. And I don't think we can keep this. This is a turn 3 Karn. Doesn't do much. This hand has no lands. Alright, we'll try this I guess. Turn 2 Chalice. Far Cry from a turn 1 Chalice. We'll try it. Turn 1 Utopia Sprawl. Turn 2 Chalice on 1. Followed by a Goblin Rebel Master. And hopefully no Hornet's Nest or Kitchen Things over there. It's gonna be Overgrowth. Alright, so we get to run out Rabble Master, could also run out the bridge. I think we want to apply pressure here with the Rabble Master instead. So we had a rough set of mulligans, Plow Under now to set us back. So this game's not looking good. But if our opponent by some miracle doesn't have an answer to Rabble Master, we might be able to get there. This looks more like the first game we played, where our opponent had infinite mana, but we had an active Rabble Master. Another Plow Under. Fair enough. So we've got no lands in play, but still a Rabble Master that's happy to attack. Opponent down to 5. Is this where they play their commands and gain 7 and crush our dreams? Eternal Witness, get back Plow Under, that's fine. So that blocks the Rabble Master, but we don't have to attack with the Rabble Master itself. Alright, another Nykthos, make a bunch of mana. And there's a Primal Command, that's probably game over now. We know we're gonna draw a bunch of lands in the following turns, so we can draw the Torpor Orb, which would be the saving grace here. So we'll just send the goblins. Opponent got a second Eternal Witness instead of Hornet Queen since they can just get back Primal Command. Possible that we should have traded Rabble Master for Witness just so they didn't get the two mana for Nykthos. But I think kind of got to keep the Rabble Master in play since that's our only hope. Opponent with Harmonize and a Hornet Nest lines up pretty well against our goblin tokens here. So I guess we're attacking. Don't really have a choice here. Opponent down to four. We'll play our ensnaring bridge. Say go. But they still have their primal command in hand. Acidic slime. Can blow up our bridge or one of our lands. And there's primal command. And gain seven. 
find another eternal witness. Play eternal witness. Yeah, this game looks pretty over to me. Well, we still made a game out of it, despite uh, mulliganing to 5. Abrade the draw, could have used that earlier. I guess we can abrade the acidic slime and keep attacking with the goblins. Put them down to 6, but they've got so much mana now with Nykthos that they can pretty much do whatever they want. Primal Command can bounce the bridge. And there's Crater of Behemoth. Alright, at least that's going to put us out of our misery right away. GG's. Alright, well, we had a close set of games here against the Green Devotion deck, but in the end we fell short. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand seems reasonable. We've got Spirit Guides to help us ramp out this Blood Moon on turn 2, and then some Planeswalkers to follow up with. Opponent with a turn 1 Scalding turn. Still fine running out of Blood Moon here, I think, even though they get to search up a basic island. Otherwise, Blood Moon is going to lose some of its effectiveness if we wait. And next turn we can run out Rebel Master. Another basic island. Chalice on one could be good. I think I'm still running out Rebel Master, though. And then we can go maybe Chandra into Chalice on one. Rebel Master resolves. And get in for one. So not sure what our opponent is up to. Right, looks like blue-white control, maybe. Alright, let's uh, see if this Chandra resolves. Does. Play our Chalice. And Lightning Bolt kills Rebel Master. Fair enough. Get in for one. Probably should have started by attacking, honestly. Snapcaster can pressure Chandra. So they're put on Jeskai control then. But now with the Chalice, they can't bolt to kill Chandra. Ooh, God Eternal Kefnet. That's spicy. Fair enough. Spirit Guide. Alright, Spirit Guide does it, so now we can search up Ensnaring Bridge with Karn and use Chandra for mana alongside Spirit Guide. And we're empty handed. So our Planeswalkers are safe. And next turn we can go for the Lattice, use Chandra for mana, and try and shut our opponent out of the game. Taps out for Jace. Perfect. Brainstorms. Let's just minus and get our lattice. And then run out the caverns. Dice to the legendary rule here. But that's okay. So our opponent's now unable to tap any of their lands for mana. Chase can be activated. They can't attack us because of ensnaring bridge. So, they seem pretty locked out of the game to me. Kefnet reveals Temporal Mastery. But uh, they're not going to be able to pay for it. Pretty cool seeing everything with the artifact frame. And yeah, her opponent concedes. So against a Jeskai Kefnet deck, how do we want to sideboard? Could consider main decking some of the copies of Spyglass. Since that's good against Jace, probably keep one in the sideboard so we can still search it up. Anger of the Gods also doesn't look great. Could consider main decking the Torpor Orb against Snapcaster Mages. Gravedigger's Cage can also help against Snapcaster in particular, but it's pretty narrow. Probably want a Welding Jar in the main to help us protect our artifacts from artifact removal. And Ballista is also a reasonable card to just have in the main deck. I think we'll take all these cards out, maybe keep in one or two Abrades to kill Snapcaster Mages and other potential creatures like Vendillion Click. Seems reasonable. Spell Scout could also be a good main deck card, protect us from Lightning Bolt. Maybe that's better than an Abrade. Alright, we'll try this. So by boarding in some of these artifacts, we did make our card minus two a little bit worse, since now we have less card selection. Think we can keep. Got a turn two Blood Moon. I'll lead with the Welding Jar. Also have a turn two Chalice if we want it. I guess starting with Chalice of the Void might be better, so we don't waste a Ritual in face of a Counterspell. 
Sure. Could have also gone for Chandra right now, but in the face of two open mana, that seems sketchy. Alright, Negate counters Chalice. Of course, Negate would not have been able to counter Rabble Master, so we could have gone Ritual if they counter it, so be it. If they don't counter it, play Rabble Master. But if their counter spells like uh, Mana Leak, we're gonna be sad. Looks like an upkeep Vendillion Click is incoming. Never mind, Giga Rouse, tapping down our lands. So we could cast our Rituals in response, but there's nothing we can do at instant speed. So we'll let that happen. So I guess maybe our opponent's slightly more of a time walk, extra turns deck, than uh, a Jeskai control. Although those decks are typically just mono blue, and our opponent had a lot more interaction with Lightning Bolt than those time walk decks. So who knows. Right, not our Chalice. Yeah, I think we're still casting a Chalice on one here. Resolves. And now playing these Goblins is a lot more effective when they can die to a Lightning Bolt. Third land. I think we just run out the War Boss first, which is probably the weaker one of the two. Resolves. Get a token. Get in for one. Opponent hitting all their land drops here. They're gonna start hard casting Temporal Mastery soon. But for now, I guess we wanna just run out another Rabble Master. Do have a lot of mana here. We've got six mana total if we want to, which would be enough for Blood Moon and Rabble Master. Maybe that's worth it. Or we could play a Chandra and still run out a Rabble Master. I guess that could be decent too. All right, let's cast a Pyretic Ritual, see what happens. Resolves, cast Chandra. Alright, Snapcaster negates. At least now we know not to send in the war boss. And we'll attack for two. Because if we play the Rabble Master, then the war boss is also forced to attack. Which is a drawback here. So we've got a lot of options once again. Could try and resolve Blood Moon, could try and resolve Karn. I think we try and resolve Blood Moon for now. Try and shut down their white mana. Resolves. Get in for three. It's gonna be a Dictate of Crufix, drawing every player an extra card on their draw step here. So yeah, definitely looks like an extra turn type deck. So we don't have infinite time before they take all the turns. I think I'll start with a Desperate Ritual. Resolves, play a Karn. Resolves, minus. Let's see what we want to get here. Could just go for the Lattice and set that up for next turn. Don't think there's anything too impactful we can get right now. The Coding can shut down one land, uh, but that's about it. Yeah, let's get uh, the Lattice, why not? And then for now we'll just attack. Keep the War Boss around. Not our Dictate. And a third Dictate, alright. So this is a turn our opponent's going to go for it. Try and chain together all the infinite turns. Snapcaster goes face. Kind of tempted to trade here, since the damage is just going to start adding up once the opponent takes extra turns. It's possible we should have been more aggressive, but now that we have a better idea what the opponent is all about, I'm probably just going to jam Rabble Master more aggressively. Opponent gets to draw four cards per turn, thanks to all those dictates. So they're pretty likely to draw an extra turn card within those draw steps. And then they can just keep chaining those together. Not sure what their win condition is. Can just be Snapcaster Beatdown. There's Kefnuts, I guess that's their win condition. And a Time Warp. They might also have a Cryptic Command in there somewhere that they can use to bounce Blood Moon if they want access to white mana. Silence as well, so that's what the white is for. Definitely an interesting take on the archetype. So this is a copy of a braid, they still have the original in hand. So using welding jars not too effective here, but I guess we might as well. And there's another braid, kills a chalice. Alright, so I think in game three we're gonna prioritize just running out uh, a rebel master and the war boss as soon as possible to keep up the pressure. Hope they don't have a lightning bolt. 
Chalice on one still seems pretty effective. Shuts down Silence, Lightning Bolt, Serum Visions, Giga Drowse. Snapcaster. All right, I think we've seen enough here. Opponent's going to be able to take all the turns. So going into game three, any changes? Gravity Girls Cage, I guess, is a consideration for Snapcaster Mage, but otherwise, not really. Yeah, I guess we just resubmit. All right, we're on the play. And we've got a turn one Blood Moon if we want it, or a turn one Rebel Master, probably Rebel Master. I'm definitely keeping. Yeah, I think I'm in. Start the beatdowns on turn one. And hope they don't have a Lightning Bolt. Turn one Island, so that's promising. Jamstone Caverns. So we can have a look here. Alright, so their hand is a braid, no red mana though. Dictate, Thing in the Ice is probably out of the sideboard. Times two. Time Warp, guess we're still naming Jace. And attack. Could have also named uh, Blast Zone that they have, but that's going to take a while before they can kill the Rebel Master with it, and it can kill our tokens. So opponent gets to play Thing in the Ice. but they're pretty far from transforming it. A braid to draw, perfect. So now we get to finish off the thing in the ice after they block. They decide to just chump the rebel master, makes sense. We'll pass the turn. Field of ruin, so they can blow up our gemstone caverns and search up a mountain so they can abrade the rebel master, but that's a pretty slow process. All right, picked up a gemstone caverns, so now an interesting line we can have is tap gemstone caverns for mana, play the second one, legendary rule, keep the new one, and then play a blood moon. Um, but I guess our opponent's probably going to use field of ruin anyway here. I think we'll start by attacking. And see if our opponent can deal with this. If they can't, they're just dead. Alright, snapcaster mage, so now we can just kill the snapcaster before blocks. And that should be game over. Alright, sweet, so maybe misplayed in the second game by not running out the Rebel Master more aggressively there, but after the first game our opponent looked more like this Jeskai control deck with Kefna jammed in, instead of uh, this extra turns combo deck that they turned out to be. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.